Hello there. How are you everybody? Today this is Pinal Dave and I'm going to talk about something very interesting thing and we are going to talk about three feature you should know about monitoring your database server. Now many of you have asked me this question like what should i look at when i'm looking at a server or do i know what i have it or what is the one thing if i would look it in the server to make it run fast and optimal but today not one not two three things we are going to talk about when we are monitoring our database server and with me i have a very interesting expert that is chris chris caswell from redgate is a social solution engineer there and very fun guy to talk to so he is going to share three things with us but before that let me just hand over our conversation to him and i'm going to ask him interesting questions and we'll talk about it so hi chris hey pinal how are you doing fantastic so chris let me ask the very first question which a lot of people keep on asking is how do i know what i have because okay if you have one sql server the life is simple like oh yeah why one server and i know where there is a problem but sometime when you are new beginner in a company organization you walk in and the very first problem which we face is like what do i have i mean what version of sql server i have how many sql server i have or are they on premises or are they on a cloud where they are hosted you know i am expiring the license what what i have what is my inventory what i'm supposed to look at it what i'm supposed to monitor how would we solve this problem my friend that makes a lot of sense let me show you uh, what we have is a really neat way of capturing all of this this is sql monitor that you're seeing on the screen right now and a couple of years ago we added this feature so this is what we call our estate page and there's a lot to go through um a lot of different um bits of information you can get out of this but to answer what you just posed right there how do you know what you have well this page will tell you exactly that so here i have a list of all of my servers that's what we can see right here and those servers i can very quickly find okay here's sql server 2008 here's where all of my sql server 2008s are installed same for 2012 which means you know 2012 soon coming to the uh, end of life date end as i'm sure you know right So how do you how do you know where those servers are? Well now you can very quickly find those. We'll tell you what patch level you're at, what your latest available update is, and this is actually a live link to go get that as well. So what do you think? Oh this is awesome. So you are saying it's a live link. So tomorrow if there is I have so many version and one of the versions that will have another RTM or CUs and it will just show up there, right? I mean that right there with the new mainstream support date. Yeah, exactly. So we have a, a live page on our, our Redgate website, basically that will say what the latest version is. And as long as you uh, have a firewall exception that grabs that, we can pull it and we'll say, you know, here's the link to the latest. You click it. That'll take you to the Microsoft website, and then you can just run the installer. Right. Oh, one question on the screen. I see that the, next to the staging, the like fourth line has a, like a small triangle. Uh, What's that? What's that one actually for? Uh, so this right here is a warning. That's basically saying that you know you are currently behind where the end of mainstream support oh. is for that particular version of SQL Server. So that's something that you might want to correct in whatever way. Maybe you need to get the, the latest cumulative update. Maybe you need to, um, I don't know. Maybe right. you need to move away from that version of SQL Server full stop, especially if it's been end of life. Oh yeah oh totally totally this is awesome so this tells us that what i have and if i'm just totally off actually while sql server performance tuning one of the thing which we always talk about is community updates having your sql server patch with the latest updates because you have no idea what you have been missing and what microsoft has been recommending so this is fantastic so this we talk about what we have but if we want to look at going beyond this like which is the one thing we must monitor when we are talking about sql server like like there are so many things we can monitor some people say monitor connections yeah we can do that but what is the core in entire sql so one thing 
which we should monitor, which affects every single database in our system. And if that thing is troubled, then we get trouble. What would be your pick, top one pick? pick? There well, are many, but one pick, yeah. Yeah, if I was going to pick one, and I owe this to uh, Grant Fritchie for pointing this out to me a few years ago, it would definitely be definitely be TempDB. Um, and again, I'll show you uh, what that looks like here. So we will collect a lot of information in SQL Monitor, um, a lot of the things you just described, and we want to present that in as easy a way as we possibly can. If I take a look at one of my servers, for example, we'll see uh, what's running on workload one currently. Mm -hmm. And you can see the basic information and some of the more complex information, what queries are running. But specifically, if we want to look at TempDB, we have this really nice section right here where we're going to take a closer look at exactly what is running in TempDB. So, for example, if you want to see what logins are alloc allocating a lot of uh, space in TempDB, then we'll be able to present that view uh, on this screen right here. This is That's actually interesting. So, this is quite a, an interesting example, I think, personally. Um, you know, everything here is running under the system user. Now, if you found everything was running under the system user, what would you think? I mean, that is just like when you look at it, like, okay, that is a problem. Anybody can get into the system and can do things, and we would not know who is doing what. And most importantly, how do we know which user is somehow using, abusing, or doing anything with SQL? So we need to have a lot of, um, everybody should have their own login so we can track their activity. This is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, like the definitely not best practice, right? So something's wrong here, something needs fixing. Absolutely. And what, when you're talking about TempDB, I mean, I, I want to say like we all think, right? Like TempDB, temp name itself sounds like, oh, this database looks like an intern database and may not be that important. We're going to get a free work done by them. That's not the case. Just like any intern, this is very critical database. They do the most of the heavy lifting work. So I think it should be called critical DB or something, but now we have a name TempDB. Uh, that's good. Hey, so what else we can do with the TempDB? This is good, yeah. Yeah, so maybe we want to see um, which database is uh, consuming the most amount of uh, TempDB or accessing the TempDB allocation. Then again, that's a great view on that. We can also view this by um, session, um, or version store allocation as well. So there's there's a lot to play with here to be able to really just understand what is taking a lot of TempDB's allocation. Right. And as and we all know, good. like if that fills up, that's a problem, right? Absolutely. And this also tells us right now when I'm looking at, I know that stake overflow database which you have there is taking a lot of TempDB. So if I have any issue with the TempDB and if I take this database away, then my problem will be solved in one way. I mean, what I'm facing, or I need to tune this particular database, focus on it, and fix it. So that's one thing. This is one of the most popular questions, right? I mean, you are displaying that. Who is consuming my database? I'm like, user can't consume. It's a database consumes them DB. So this is awesome. Yeah. And uh, can we also see user summary? I mean, yeah. So if we want to have a look at the general usage summary, then uh, that's what we're seeing right here. This will show you, so for example, the amount of free space in blue, and then what's actually taking the space um, broken down by different colors as well. This is so good. Version store is also visible. Now, I, don't, I haven't seen it personally. I haven't seen this kind of thing um, out there available, ready to know in industry. So this is... This is cool. Yeah, TempDB. Let's start getting tuning TempDB. So yeah, that is an uh, interesting one. And so TempDB is the one thing I, I tell all my clients that if you want best possible performance, make sure your TempDB on the best possible health and on the fastest possible drive. Otherwise, you are just calling in for trouble because you can see pretty much every single user, most of the user object and a lot of things are using TempDB. Yes. So I have one more question for you, Chris. 
And that is, so first thing we talked about, like your SQL server should be updated. It should be, uh, and there are ways to know what a state, is its history and health. And then we talked about most important database, TMDB. But those are actually configuration level. But if, if my boss comes and sits on my shoulder and say, show me what is going on in our system, good, bad, ugly, or what, if, what you got, How, what, what would you do? Like you, you have this tool, like I have this tool. Now I'm giving you this task. Tell me what is going on in my server right now. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess there's a couple of things here. Number one is we're going to be continuously grabbing information and raising alerts based on what's happening in the system. That's a, a whole thing that we could spend like an hour talking about, I'm sure. So I'm not going to go into that. Um, but most recently, and the one thing that I really want to show you, because you know we've only just added this and I'd love to get your feedback, is the current activity page. So this is showing you um, well, exactly what is happening in your server right now. And for example, we can see, okay, here's a specific query, and we can then have a closer look at the query itself. Um, we can see the actual query plan. Oh, nice. Browse the query Ooh. plan. You see the actual query text here as well. Right. And then further details about that. Another nice one, unfortunately, I've not got one to show you right here in this server at least, is we'll also show you if there's any blocking happening there as well. Uh, so that's something that very hot off the press. We added that literally in the last uh, few weeks. That is good. So these are the new features, right? This is a very new feature which we are discussing about because um, monitoring has been there. Like this product is many years old product. If you look at it, I've been using this since uh, it was launched in 2008. And all this, every time I log in, there is something new to see. I also see then a corner what's new, but we that is for us to download and uh, explore some other day. Yeah. Oh, that is cool. It just <laughs> pops up. Who wants to go to new window, right? I mean, things are just there in front of us. Uh, Azure, taking filtering. That's good. Tech is the world to go. We need to know where we are doing things. So this is awesome. I have one more question when I see the what is going on right now. Um, mm -hmm. Can we just click on another link? Right now, I see there is a wait call, wait for. Can we open any other session like 60 and 62? I want to see if the wait changes and what kind of wait they have. Yeah, so let's have a look at some of the other ones. So here we have SQL Trace File Read IO completion um, affecting that one. And if we have a look at 62, uh, okay. no waits affecting that query. Oh, that is good. So we now exactly know if the query was getting affected or not and what's going on. And also when we were seeing the 60, it was, or 68, they were showing us the link to go and check it. Can we just click on maybe the wait for one? This is the one because it says wait time 169. So I clicked on it. Oh, yep. so we've got the little information box there. And then you can see actually the description of that wait. If we've captured that wait description, that will be there. Alternatively, in this case, we've got a link to the Microsoft documentation um, so right. you can read about that and just save you a little bit of you know, searching around the internet to find exactly what that way type is, especially if you've not seen that before. Right, right. No, that is good. And I, I was tempted to ask when you click on a view query plan, uh, there was one thing which really caught my eyes. Can we go back to that for a last yeah, one course. minute, maybe? Right. So here, I was curious to know that we can even download also query plan. I mean, query plan will load, but that was cool because this let is me, what I uh, tell Let my... me get the one we had previously as well because that was a bit more interesting. Um, right. Yeah, so you've got the download link right there. You know, there's plenty of um, tools people use to, to really break down query plans. So we wanted to make it really easy and accessible for people to just download the query plan and load it in whatever query plan analysis platform they might want to use. Right. Do you know why this is so critical? Because I have been sending, everybody send me, can you help me tune my query? And I just have to teach them, okay, go to SQL Server Query Management Studio, you do this thing, right click on it, save this one. And once they are going to save that, they do not know they need to save it with extension of SQL plan. They have to do that. And after they do, they have to say, the process to tell people to send you plan is a nightmare itself. When I see this one, I was so impressed. Like, okay, you make my life easy. 
to share with my clients, my friends, and my colleagues, and a lot of things. This is new. This is good. Impressive. Sounds little bit simple, but it's very thought. Somebody really put a thought. He must be a good user. And I can see the execution plan there as well. So this is cool. Yeah. I'm glad to hear you. it. Glad to hear it. Like we, we try and exist to make people's lives easier when it comes to working with databases. So that's our goal. And as long as we're doing that, then we're happy. Thank you. So this was the three things, right? We talked about estate page, MDB, current activity page, and yeah, it was fun to talk to you. Anything you want to add? Um, I guess I, I've already mentioned it, but um, we're always happy to talk to people when it comes to assisting their database uh, problems and trying to make their lives easier when it comes to working with databases. So right. if there's anything that uh, any of your clients have problems around understanding what's happening in the database or delivering database changes quicker or just getting access to test data sets, then we're always happy to talk to people about those problems and see how we can fix them. Right. And no, th thank you, Chris. And one more thing I'm going to do it for everybody is that I'm going to put the links to download and some of the important interesting link in a description of this video so people can just directly click on it and Download this and use, play with it. And if they have any question, you are there and oh, lots of help out for this particular product. So this is interesting. It was fun conversation. So guys, I mean, we should, we should try this. One. I, I have it. I have it. I've been trying it with my clients. So this is very nice. And thank you, Chris, for spending time with me today. Thank you. Great talking to you.